This week on 49ers Sack High Sports, the smoke wrecking havoc on Friday Night Football, but we got some highlights. We'll show you Oak Ridge taking on Vacaville, Mountain House meeting Weston Ranch, and Granite Bay meeting Davis. We have fantastic early season volleyball matchups with St. Francis meeting Oak Ridge and Christian Brothers battling Granite Bay, plus the story of the Mountain House football player, hoping Mountain House will be his last stop after moving all around the country. 49ers Sack High Sports starts right now. One game postponed due to the smoke. The two teams making it up in a Monday night game. That's right. Ryan Lewis returns a quarterback for Del Oro as well as his favorite receiver, Aiden Perry. Jordan Wagner is a top defensive player for Lincoln. It's the Fighting Zebras and Golden Eagles Monday night. The zoo is under construction. The students are building it back up, they say, for the new year. Opening drive, Lincoln with the ball. Look out. Here comes big Akio Martinson barreling in for the sack. Second quarter action, Lincoln on the attack. Quarterback Johnny Bowser keeps the rock, heads up field, and dies for a first down. That will set up this trick play as Bowser throws a backwards pass to Thomas Mukai, who chucks it way downfield to a wide open Gianni Faria for six. Put it on the board, 7-0 Zebras. Here comes the Golden Eagles. Ryan Lewis connects with Aiden Perry, who's knocked out at the one by Jordan Wagner and Jacob Flood. But that will set up this Del Oro quarterback keeper by Lewis. PAT is no good. It's now 7-6. A late zebra turnover puts Del Oro knocking at the door. But a great goal line stand and the zebras hold on to a one point halftime lead. In the third, Del Oro's Lewis finds Freedom Brown who makes the catch and delivers a big blow. That would set up this TD strike from Ryan Lewis to Aiden Perry for six. PAT good, 13-7 Golden Eagles. In the fourth, D.O.'s defense got really stingy. Thomas Graham gets up and snags the pass for the INT. Lincoln with the ball late, down six, but Jaden Flores comes in on a blitz to get the quarterback. And the Golden Eagles get the win and give head coach Mike Maven his first D.O. win. Jordan Wagner tallied 13 tackles for the Zebras, and Ryan Lewis added two more touchdowns. I mean, we're great players, big dudes, hit hard. I mean, they compete, and we compete harder, I think, tonight. I think we wanted it more tonight. The Davis Blue Devils hosting a tough Granite Bay Grizzly team Friday night. First Grizzly possession, Noah Mitchum hands it off to Jace Latson, and Latson is off to the races. The senior running back cuts left and finds his way to pay dirt. Granite Bay scores first. The Grizzlies go up 7-0. On the ensuing Blue Devil drive, Trajan Clark pitches it to Ryan Harmio, who follows his blockers. That's Jude Vaugh there putting in work. Forward progress lands Davis at midfield. Three plays later, Clark drops back, launches a ball to none other than Harmio. Ryan makes his way up the sideline and dives into the end zone. Touchdown, Davis. We are tied at 7. And that hyped up the Davis student section. Four minutes to go in the first quarter. It's 14-7 Granite Bay. Dominic Soares returning the punt. Soares returns it all the way back. He cuts to the far sideline and he's all by himself. The Grizzlies lead it 21-7 at the end of the first. Second quarter handed off to Latson because it is working. Jace turns on the Jets and propels his way into the end zone making it 28-7. How about the Grizzly defense? Brian Haina putting the pressure on, and then Elijah Acosta dives in for the sack. In the fourth, Davis looking to cut the Grizzly deficit. Clark unloads. It's a 34-yard pass to Harmio, and that was an absolute dime. But Granite Bay tacks on two more scores in the second half. Mitchum escapes the pressure. Throws on the run to Soares. That's Dom's second touchdown of the night on the Grizzlies' way to the 56-13 win over Davis. Latson, Mitchum, and Soares all with two touchdowns. Nick Pecorero hanging out at Whitney High School on Thursday as the Wildcats take on the sixth-ranked Pleasant Grove Eagles. Pleasant Grove would take the first set 25-19, so we're picking this one up late in the second. All tied up at 22, and check out this rally. What a sequence we have here. Jesse Camarillo coming out of nowhere to keep that one alive. And then it's Morgan Kazel's turn, number 11. 
right there for Whitney. Boom, keeps that one up. She was celebrating her 16th birthday on Thursday. This rally went on so long that we can actually sing to her on this highlight. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Morgan. And the dig goes to you. This rally is still going. Finally, Whitney decides to end this thing as Kazel gets it to Caitlin Cochran, who finds Addie Hamilton for the kill, and everyone is fired up. Whitney ties it up at one set apiece. Then it's Cochran showing off the guns on set point, giving Whitney a 2-1 lead after three. She had a triple-double on Thursday, 12 kills, 22 digs, and 49 assists. But here comes Pleasant Grove in the fourth. Savannah Risley finds Francesca Hahn, who puts it right through the teeth of the Whitney defense. Pleasant Grove takes set four, 25-13. And in the fifth, senior Jade Light takes over for the Eagles. Her name may be Light, but she's a heavy hitter, and she gets that one to go. And then Light puts the finishing touch, showing off her softer side on match point. It's just as effective. The Eagles take the fifth set, 15 to 13. Light went for 25 kills to lead Pleasant Grove to its second win to begin the season. Time to announce our first players of the week for the fall season. First, it's Nicholas Coronado from Kimball High School. Coronado completed 23 passes, racking up 350 yards and three touchdowns in the Jaguars' big win over Tracy last week. Our second player of the week is Darian Leon Guerrero from Vacaville. Darian was weaving his way up and down the field in the Bulldogs' 45-8 win over Davis. Darian had 219 yards with three touchdowns. Stanford Healthcare brings us important tips each week so athletes can perform at their very best. Here's 49ers team physician Dr. Tim McAdams with this week's Stanford Health tip. Pain in the front of your knee is common in young athletes, especially when you do a lot of jumping, and especially now after COVID shutdown, where we have seen a rapid increase in activity level without an adequate ramp up period. Jumper's knee, or patella tendonitis, is the term given to inflammation that occurs as the tendon comes off the bone, usually seen in older adolescents and beyond. Osgood Slaughter's is the term for when the inflammation is located at the tibial tubercle. I usually see Osgood Slaughter's in the younger athlete with open growth plates, which we call physes. Once you stop growing, the physis closes up and the issue generally resolves. Until that time, it is usually manageable with periods of rest and physical therapy for a stretching and strengthening program. Coming up, our Sun Power Electric game, it's Vacaville playing host to Oak Ridge. And stick around for some top-notch volleyball between St. Francis and Oak Ridge. 49ers Sack High Sports will be right back. The team approach that Stanford Healthcare took with my diagnosis was really the reason why I'm able to be where I am today. Jeremy's condition was very unique in that he had a genetic hereditary variant called nail patella syndrome. With Jeremy coming from pretty far away, we really wanted to keep tabs on his recuperation. Video visits really allows us to engage with the patient and explore treatment options. Moving forward, I've been able to engage in sports in a way that I've never been able to engage before. At Tracy Toyota, we're not just devoted to selling cars. We're committed to our community. We're donating $100,000 to help local organizations in Tracy. We call it Champions Thinking Heroes, like the Tracy Family Resource Center who serve the local community. To reach our goal, we'll donate $50 for every vehicle sold. Check out our great lineup of new Toyotas. Our certified used cars come with a seven-year, 100,000-mile warranty. Tracy Toyota, with you all the way. Bang, bang, Niner Cat. Niner Cat. We got mad at many have tried, but many have failed. The 49ers got the live fans in the NFL. I tried to tell them we back and we never left and we got heart. Leave our stadium starting to feel like candlestick park. Who are we? Bang bang Niner gang. Niner gang. Bang bang Niner gang. Niner gang. Bang bang Niner gang. We are back at the NBC Sports Studio here at Levi Stadium for our next matchup taking place in Vacaville. That's right. Oak Ridge and Vacaville playing in our first Sun Power Electric game, and our Brian Mueller was there. Electric game. We are back at Vacaville for another Sun Power Electric game, and it is a matchup between two teams that won big in week one. Vacaville vanquished Davis 45 to eight, and Oak Ridge shut down Consumnus Oaks 
42 to nothing. Senior running back Reese Catchings went for 163 yards on the ground and two touchdowns. As for the Bulldogs, senior running back Darian Leon Guerrero had a smashing season opener, totaling 219 yards and three touchdowns. He'll try to keep the yards coming in our Sun Power electric game. The Bulldogs entering Friday night 0-8 all-time versus Oak Ridge, and they are eager to put an end to the dog days against the Trojans. The defenses came to play first quarter. Brady Mont set the tone with a sack, stalling the Trojan drive, but Oak Ridge has their own answer on defense. Zach Lerner comes up with the pick, and Oak Ridge is sitting pretty. But on the ensuing possession, Mott gets an interception of his own, and he has some juice down the sideline, returns it to the Vacaville 45, and the Bulldogs turn that turnover into points thanks to Darian Leon Guerrero. He nearly gets in. The senior punches it in a play later, and Vacaville takes a 7-0 lead. The Dog Pound loving it. Second quarter now, Oak Ridge responding. Drew Cower goes up top to Aiden Clark for the score, and we're tied at 7. That would be the score at halftime. Second half, Leon Guerrero breaks out a couple moves from the Bulldog back, and he is gone. 178 yards for the senior, and Vacaville takes a 14-7 lead. And the defense made sure that stood up. The hard-hitting dogs didn't give the Trojans anything. Eric Gladney gladly breaks up this pass with the hard hit. It's 17-10 now in the fourth. Last chance for Oak Ridge with under two minutes left. Maddox Varela in a QB. He escapes a pack of Bulldogs and finds Sean Dwyer down the field to their own 42. The Trojans march all the way into the red zone, but it's fourth and 10 now at the 17. Varela goes for it all. Dwyer catches it again, but this time he's out of bounds and Vacaville is victorious. They're not excited by it at all. 17 to 10 is the final, the first time the Bulldogs have bested the Trojans and they did it behind a defense that only gave up 193 total yards. You just had to find a way to stop them and came down the last play, last two times we played them and even this one, so just, just did what we had to do. A lot of preparation and practice all week, did good, knew, knew what was coming, knew, knew everything. We just had the answers to the test and we executed. Mark Willis out and rocking where the X Factor greeted Chico very loudly. Whitney gets the ball first. Sophomore quarterback Jacob Smiley avoids the sack, rolls to his right, and throws a dot to his tight end Luke Vanderacker. A few plays later, it's just about the same play. Smiley on the run. Vandenacker hauls in the pass with his right hand in the end zone. 7 0 Cats. Next drive for the Wildcats. Smiley fakes the handoff, and up the middle he goes. Rumbles down the field for 16 yards. The sophomore getting the job done. Smiley in the gun throws a strike to Phoenix Rose on the skinny post who dives into the end zone. He's in. PAT, no good, but it's all good. 13-0 Cats. Chico with the ball. It's time to meet Carson Phillips for Whitney, who shoots the A-gap for the tackle. More Whitney D as Ian Don punches the ball out. Nathan Pierce dives on it, and the Wildcats are in business. Smiley at the helm, he fakes the run, rolls to his right, and connects with Rose again. Another touchdown, who gets two feet in the end zone. It's now 20 to nothing. Still in the second quarter, and look out, we have another defensive highlight for you. Phillips and Pierce stop the running back for a loss. Dude, did you get that? Yeah, man, totally did. Bet. Well, boys, I hope you got this. It's a Brandon Wong sighting, the hard-hitting safety senior getting the sack. The X Factor was getting after in the stands. Speaking of getting after it, it's Brandon Wong chasing down the quarterback for another sack. In the second half, the Wildcats went to the ground game. Anthony Parker was racking up chunks of yards for Whitney. Don't change a thing, coach. They don't, and Parker gets the ball again. Bangs his way upfield. One more time, Anthony Parker could not be stopped. Down the sidelines he goes, all the way down to that two-yard line. That led to this Whitney jumbo set, and they give the ball to who else? Yeah, that's right, another running back, Carson Phillips. What? He scores from a yard out, and the dishes are done, man. Chico kicks a field goal late, but Whitney goes on to win 27-3 as the Wildcats win their home opener. Jacob Smiley was all smiles with three TD passes.
I want to thank my line. They had a really, they did a really good job protecting me, and I want to thank my receivers for catching the ball and my coaches for the great play calling. And they just put put me in the great opportunities to make those good throws and make those game changing throws and touchdowns. Brian Mueller here at Oak Ridge Thursday night for a battle of the unbeatens. The Trojans off to a perfect 7-0 start while St. Francis won their only match of the year. First set, the visiting Troubadours get off to a fast start. Carly Padilla with a perfect set to Airline Foraker who splits the defense. St. Francis up 9-7. But the Trojans playing some D to get back in it. Molly Azevedo with the running set. Olivia Medina comes flying in for the kill. Oak Ridge takes the first set, 25-19. The Troobs trying to regroup, but the Trojans continue their charge. Abigail Reynolds fired up about this block. Oak Ridge has a 20-11 lead, but leave it to the Troubadours to create some drama. Sophia Garza drops the hammer to make it an 11-1 St. Francis run. They led 22-21. Garza, a team-high 14 kills. Set point, Padilla finishes the job, and the Troobs take the second set, 25-23. Now it's the Trojans' turn to regroup, and they do. Lilani Yang sets it up for Madison Walker, who uses a little finesse for the point. That makes it 2017. Trojans win the set, 25-17. To the fourth, it looks like the Troubadours are going to steal this one. Padilla goes to the ground for the set. Foraker makes it 18-13 St. Francis. But the Trojans respond with a 12-1 run behind the splendid spiking of Walker. She had a game-high 17 kills. Oak Ridge comes back to take the fourth set 25-19 and wins the match 3-1. They are now 8-0 on the season. I'm Mark Willis, and Bear River took on Placer in a volleyball match. Game one, and it was a battle at the net all night long on the free ball for Bear River. Leah's Fullerton taps it over the net, but it's blocked by Emma Watkins for the point. But Bear River takes game one. Placer makes a play on the ball, but right to Lauren Reichert, who slams it off the top of the net, and it falls in. Game two was super tight, just like game one. Placer's Emma Watkins sets up Kirsten Jolt, who slams it past the wall. But the Bruins would take game two as well, as Fuller ends up with an ah, ace. Game three, Placer made some adjustments. Mackenzie Roeder bumps it to Watkins, who sends it over to Katie McAllister, who slams it off the D. Placer wins 25-18. On to game four. Bear River needs one more set for the win. Kaylee Barrera tries to sneak the ball past the defense, but Placer's there for the return, and they get the ball back. Kirsten Jolt is there to slam it down. Game tied at two. On to game five, and the Bruins could not hold off a late game attack from Placer. Emma Watkins sets it to her outside hitter, Claire Johnson, who buries it home from the back row. Placer goes on to win three games to two. Briera sisters combined for 37 assists in a losing effort. Coming up, our U.S. Bank inspirational athlete, it's Roy Garter from Mountain House. But first, take a look at our girls volleyball top 10 poll. Every day, the sun comes up, and right on cue, the work begins. We start every morning, knowing full well we are in it for the long haul. Our work is a labor of love, no task too small, no moment uncherished. And although we're not often thanked, we rest knowing that our work is making a brighter future. This is more than milk. Right now, my electrical bill is about $10 a month. This is definitely one of the best investment we did in our house. All over the country, people are taking control over their electric bills by going solar with SunPower. We offer the most efficient, durable panels on the market, so you can see a return on your investment every month. I was paying $220 a month, but now I pay about $22 a month. Right now, 49ers faithful get a $1,000 Visa reward card from SunPower. Go online today. We got next, we ready to flex, we are ready to rock, headed to the top, we got next, can't settle for less, I'ma need your best, so give it all you got. Kennedy Schoenauer makes space with four defenders around her and fires from 31 yards out and hits it perfectly. Can't settle for less, I'ma need your best, so give it all you got, we got next. Number one, numero uno, front page in the news, yeah, now you know, for the win, blood, sweat, tears in the gym, harder than the rest. 49ers Sack Eye Sports is brought to you by these fine companies who care about high school sports. 
by Stanford Healthcare, number one in Northern California for orthopedics, and by SunPower, proud sponsor of the San Francisco 49ers. Each week we bring you stories of inspirational athletes who overcome adversity to succeed on the field and in the classroom. Roy Gardner has lived in six different cities all across the nation. His latest stop being in Mountain House, where the junior athlete is thriving on and off the field. But will Mountain House be Roy's last stop before graduation? Just west of Tracy, off Highway 205, the new town of Mountain House is rapidly growing. Most of the homes there are no more than 10 years old. The high school opened up in 2014. For many families, moving to Mountain House means a new start. Roy Gardner knows all about new starts. We're a military family, so we started off in Mississippi, then we went to Georgia, Florida, then Illinois, and then we ended up here. Yeah, I'm um, active duty military, um, active duty Coast Guard. Uh, been in the Coast Guard about um, 14 years now, 1 or 14 years. We've been in four or five different states. He's just had to adjust everywhere we went. Mississippi, Georgia, Florida, Illinois, and California. Roy says the hardest part about moving all over is being the new kid. Making new friends and then not, not everyone knowing who you are, so you have to make a name for yourself. Everywhere we go, like I said, he, he has to meet new friends. Uh, you know, I actually think that's one of his strong points as well. So, you know, um, I preach to him all the time not to settle and, you know, just be complacent. Well, we tell him everywhere we go, nobody knows you. So we move to different states and say, nobody knows you. I tell him he has to go and get his name out there and make, make something out of himself. Thanks to sports, Roy was able to make new friends and make what he says to be lasting connections, especially with head coach Jabari Carr. Coach Carr, like I said, pushes me uh, to be better and he doesn't want me just to be good in Mountain House. He wants me to be good around the world, better than everyone. I think the biggest thing that Roy brings to our program is just his leadership. I mean, he's an all around good kid. Um, he's not just that kid that has all these yards and makes all these plays. Like, the kid has a 3.8 GPA. He's a community leader. He, uh, and he's, at his age, a lot of people aren't doing that, right? He's been a team captain for three years. Roy is now in his junior season, but with his dad still active in the Coast Guard, it was unclear whether Mountain House would be his last stop. You know, I was pulling my hair out, um, you know, because not, not only would Roy, you know, I, I have, um, we have two other kids, so um, I told Coach Carr, <laughs> I don't know if we're going to be able to stay, man. You know, I put in to stay here, so. Roy and his family received the news they will be staying in Mountain House until Roy graduates. With that no longer weighing heavy on his mind, Roy can now focus on his goals. Who? be an all-league academic honor, which is huge. I think with Roy, he'll get a lot of scholarship offers as not an athlete, but a student. So I think that's one of the biggest things that people have to realize, right? This is a kid who's a good player, but he's gonna go to school paid for because of his GPA, not because of his athletic ability. He's gonna accomplish something big. I, I tell him all the time, it's not what me and mom want you to accomplish, it's what you want to accomplish. I try to instill to him, Nothing is given to you. You have to go get it yourself. We don't spoon feed him. Go out and get it on his own. I don't think there's a ceiling for him. Coach Carr cannot have enough great things to say about Roy and his family. Roy is fit in so well with the Mountain House team and community, and he is very happy he will be able to stay at the school until he graduates. Yeah, new school, new town, yes. and they're trying to build that. So used to going around, but he said, this is where I want to stay. This is it. Fantastic. All right, coming up, it's the game of the week as McClatchy and Rosemont battle it out. But first, here's this week's Spirit Corner featuring the cheer team from Monterey Trails.
hip trap and many have failed. The 49ers got the livest fans in the NFL. I tried to tell them we back and we never left and we got heart. Levi Stadium starting to feel like Candlestick Park. Who are we? Bang Bang Niner Gang. Bang Bang Niner Gang. Bang Bang Niner Gang. The team approach that Stanford Healthcare took with my diagnosis was really the reason why I'm able to be where I am today. Jeremy's condition was very unique in that he had a genetic hereditary variant called male patella syndrome. With Jeremy coming from pretty far away, we really wanted to keep tabs on his recuperation. Video visits really allows us to engage with the patient and then explore treatment options. Moving forward, I've been able to engage in sports in a way that I've never been able to engage before. The McClatchy cheerleaders are ready to see their team win over Rosemont Friday night. We are starting these highlights off in the second half. We are scoreless and there's the kickoff. Luther Hicks on the return. Hicks goes up the middle and picks up 25 yards to put the Wolverines in great field position. Then it's Michael Cherry getting Rosemont in the red zone. The handoff from Joseph Ortiz and Cherry busts up the middle. He's a bit shaken up on the play, but don't worry. Michael was about to have a big game. The McClatchy D comes up with a stop. Xavier Esquivel was a beast at linebacker, a big part of the McClatchy defensive effort. Three minutes to go in the third. The Wolverines are knocking, but the ball is fumbled, and Jack Smith recovers it to put the Lions offense on the field. Quarterback Frank Espinoza hands it off to Kazi Lewis. Kazi tries left, bumps off the pile, and pops out coming the other way. There he is. Lewis gets taken down near midfield as the quarter winds down. We're picking up the drive in the fourth quarter. Still a nothing-nothing game. Rosemont's Keegan Hill puts a stop to the Lions' momentum. Next Wolverine possession. Quarterback Ortiz hands it off to Cherry. Watch Cherry squeeze through that line, and he is off. The sophomore just keeps on going 67 yards to the house, and it's the first score of the game. McClatchy trying to get those points back, but watch out. Charles Parker, he ain't going nowhere. Seven minutes left in this one. Rosemont needing the big play. The Lions throw it deep, but there to play spoiler is Luther Hicks. Just a sophomore. Rosemont has some young talent. Final Wolverine possession. Ortiz shoves it to DeShannon Malone. Malone bounces around and then he's off. Malone picks up Rosemont's second touchdown to increase the Wolverine lead to 14. And that was the final. Cherry and Malone score for Rosemont in the 14 to nothing victory. Joe Davidson from the Sacramento Bee met up with the Wolverines after the game. We are caught up to a jubilant group of Rosemont Wolverines here in the Sacramento City Unified School District. They're in a bowl setting. This is like the only game that played at all tonight around here, and you guys had a nice showing, so congratulations to all that. All right, Michael Cherry, you had a, a touchdown run. You had enough legs in there. How, how, how good does it feel to, to get a touchdown and just get a win? Uh, it feels great. It feels great. I would have well, thanked my blocking. And oh, yeah, right, the, you put the team on the back. Without y'all, would have got to the tackles. second. I don't want to hear it. Without y'all, would have got to second level. And, uh, uh, second level. and then they come in all sizes here for the Wolverines. The Sean and uh, what? It doesn't matter the size of the of the guy. It's, it's the size of the effort, right? Uh huh. Yep. Tell us about about your team. We work hard for this, bro. <laughs> and and you gotta have some you gotta have some stoppers. So how about uh, Charles Parker? You guys play some good defense against a team that scored 44 last week. You shut them out. Uh, you guys shut out a team that scored 44 last week. What 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 was working? It was working. Uh, you know, we just played good and we played physical and we just listened to the coaches and uh, we all did our own thing. What, tell us a little bit about your school. What what should people know about the the, the Rosemont Wolverines? Uh, work ethic. You know, we a small school and. People really don't know about us, and we want to show that you know we could do we, we could do our thing. Yes, is this a is this a playoff team? Huh? Is this a playoff team, yeah, everybody? Yes. Oh, yeah. 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 I'm Joe Davidson of the Sacramento Bee. Check us out every day on SagB.com. Check out this program throughout the week. Thank you, guys. We'll see you next time. Hey, let's get ready. Rose one, on three. One, two, three. Wow. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go, baby. We're heading out to Marysville where the Indians are hosting the Wheatland Pirates for the Yuba Cup. Starting in the first, Marysville has the ball, but not for long as Caden Glover slips in and snags this interception to give the Pirates the ball. 
This would lead to the first touchdown of the game, putting Wheatland ahead. But it wouldn't take long for the Indians to answer back, especially if Elijah Marin has anything to say about it. Marin finds his opening and drives the ball to the end zone to put Marysville on the board. With under a minute till the half, Wheatland's Ashton Agrucula connects with Glover to make this touchdown to lengthen their lead over the Indians. Later in the third, Marysville battles back with Tier McVeigh sliding past multiple Pirates to find his way into the end zone. In the fourth, it's Ellie Sola Frost who shows his speed when Wheatland fumbles and Frost is quick to dive, snagging the ball for his team. This leads to another Indians touchdown with Marin once again finding his way to the end zone, putting them in the lead. It's an absolute war zone in the city of Marysville with five minutes left to play. Agricola throws this deep shot to Jordan Bevan, who has a clear path to make a touchdown for Wheatland. But Marysville is still in the lead and they decide not to make it a close one when Chris Bridgers makes an interception and races all the way down to the end zone like it was nothing. Bridgers, he has the speed, he has the moves, and he has the blocking. He picks it at the two and takes it all the way down for a 98-yard touchdown. I don't know about you, but this could be the play of the week. Marysville would take the W for the night, 32-21. Heading out to Stockton now for the 13th annual Girls Volleyball Classic. Starting off on court three, it's Manteca and Bradshaw Christian. Abby Cadillac gets a dig. Ariel Chandler sets it to Adriana Powell for the kill. It gives the Buffaloes a six-point lead. On the Pride's side of the court, Mackenzie Tatarin back sets it to Emerson Patterson. The finesse shot goes, but Manteca in control of the first. Chandler, the long set to Powell. Off the block and down, Manteca wins at 125-14. More Manteca in the second. Cadillac, the smooth bump to Isabella Pyers, and then Isabella Sanchez finds no man's land. The Pride trying to battle back. Sydney Ninus to Tatarin to Patterson. Bump set kill Emerson's shot is too hot to handle, but then it's Manteca putting up a wall. Carly Spawn, the senior captain with the block. Manteca wins the match two sets to none, and so we head to court two. The Somerville Bears taking on Franklin of Stockton. Midway through the first set, Maddie Myers blocks the yellow jacket shot. The Bears go on to take a 22-19 lead, but Franklin not going anywhere. Anissa Arroyo to Faith Zamora, back to Arroyo, and Anissa finds the corner to cut the Somerville lead in the first. But it's the Bears who take the first set. Kennedy Ballard, Lexi Neville, Julia Bruce, 25-15 the final after one, but Franklin would rally back to force a third set. Yellow Jackets up by one in the third. They go Isabeth Hernandez to Wendy Reyes to Zamora to win the point and then win the match. Arroyo's serve is perfect. Franklin wins it two sets to one. Last but not least, over on court one, we had a thriller between Franklin of Oak Grove and Toke. First set, Franklin on the near court. Ella Klein sets it over to Ella Crawford, who finds empty court. Franklin controls this match early on. Crawford, Klein, and then Tia Maccasini. 11-3, Franklin. Toke on the far court here, trying to chip away at the Wildcat lead. Kimberly Mercado, Paris Bang, and Taylor Willis combined for the point. You're going to want to watch this next one. Crawford keeps the ball in play. The ball soars wide. Maccasini throws out her arm, and you got to see it to believe it. Finds open court on the Tiger side. Impressive. Franklin takes the first set, but Toke has a handle in the second. Morgan Daniels, Paige Delf to Mercado in the corner. The Tiger fans are roaring in the stands. Franklin has its work cut out for them. Down 19-8, Maccasini to Crawford, who tools it off the block, but Toke goes on to win the set. Jacqueline Patino, the libero with the dig. Paris Bang, the gorgeous set. Then Taylor Willis lands a baseline shot. We're going to a third set. Delft to Mercado. What a game for that senior. 14-12 Tigers, and here is match point. What a block from Franklin there. Delft, the bump. Then Hannah Okery slams it over on the second hit. Toke, the Tigers rally back down by a set to win the match. Exciting volleyball over at the range. Coming up, Monterey Trail traveling to the Bay to take on Los Gatos. Then it's Granite Bay and Christian Brothers on the volleyball court. You're watching 49ers Sack High Sports. We'll be right back. 
Adrian Soriano in SoCal as Monterey Trail takes on Los Gatos. The Wildcats looking to get their offense started. Hand it to Emiliano Mejia, who runs down the sideline, breaks a couple tackles for a nice gain, but the LG drive would stall and it's scoreless after one. Monterey Trail knocking on the door to start the second, but Lucas White forces the fumble as the Wildcats defense get a stop. Then it's defense leading to offense as Mejia takes the handoff, picks up a block from Kaito Haaki, and takes it all the way to the 43-yard line. Just a few plays later, Jake Boyd shows off the pump fake, rolls to the left and connects with Boise State bound senior Jake Rip for the TD. PAT good and it's 7-0 Los Gatos. Monterey Trail trying to use some razzle-dazzle to tie the game, but the pass is picked off by Quinn Merritt and Quinn will run for a while all the way inside the 25-yard line and the Wildcats are back in business. Los Gatos takes advantage of the turnover as Boyd throws the screen pass to Mejia and Emiliano sheds a couple tackles and dives in for six. It's 14-0 Wildcats in the lead. The Mustangs strike back on their next drive. Frank Arcuri heaves it deep down the far sideline for Fatafehi Puloka who holds it in and Fatafehi will walk in for the score to cut the deficit to eight. But the Cats get those points right back just before halftime. Boyd finds Rip in the end zone again and it's 21-6 LG at the half. Third quarter and Mejia gets the handoff again. Makes a defender miss, runs down the sideline, scampers in for the touchdown and gets a little help from Colin Dooley to find where the camera is and it's 28-6 Los Gatos Wildcats in the lead. Monterey Trail fights back on their next drive. Arcuri fires it deep down the sideline for Brevin Amiga who makes the catch and takes it inside the 15. Then just a few plays later give it to Ronnie Brutus who just gets in for the score. Two point conversion no good and it's 28-12 Wildcats after three. LG still pouring it on in the fourth. It's Caspian Bailey on the run now, and Caspian dives in for six. The Mustangs trying to answer, but Luchi Casali forces the fumble. Trent Steiner comes up with a loose ball as the Wildcats win it 42 to 20. Emiliano Mejia talks about how the team got ready to play a new team in a matter of hours. We've dealt with a lot this year, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of obstacles, but we stay ready every week, every day. And uh, no matter the team, we're, willing to, we're ready to play. And uh, we came out here, we just gave it our best, and we executed well. It was a, it was a great game, yeah. The Granite Bay Grizzlies opening up their season facing Christian Brothers Monday night. First point of the match, Lily Paddock digs it. Drew de Guzman sets it up to Jillian Hurley, who kills it. Christian Brothers with the hot start as Alana Yuzon denies the Grizzlies shot to take the 10-6 lead in the set. Watch this gorgeous back row kill, the bump and set from Mackenzie Wells and Emily Craig and Lily Gruya's powerful shot lands. But Hurley comes up with a phenomenal back row kill herself, the set from Lillian Prez and kaboom, 22-15 brothers. The Grizzlies trying to cut down that deficit. Hannah Lang and Emily Craig, then Simron Lallian, 23-19 brothers. Then the denial from Haley Erickson. The Grizzlies end up erasing the seven-point deficit to win the set. Gruya, Craig, then Mackenzie Wells secures the point and the set. Granite Bay wins set 126-24. Christian Brothers trying to bounce back. Lillian Perez sets up Lily Paddock, who tools it off the block, but... Granite Bay with the lead late in the second. Mia Yurasevic to Craig to Hannah Lang from the back row. Then it's Lang and Craig getting it outside to Gruya. Lily is money. Granite Bay goes up two sets to none. Falcons fighting back in the third. Paddock bumps to Dick Guzman who sets up Hurley and that one's not coming back. Then Julia White stuffs it at the net and CB has the four point lead late, but Granite Bay knows how to play comeback volleyball and they do it here. Watch Erickson get the bump and the kill. Grizzlies win set three, 26-24 to complete the sweep to go to one and oh on the season. Each week we present the Scholar Athlete Award. This week's Scholar Athlete Award goes to Kevin Boone Nelson from Indercom High, the junior receiver sports an impressive 4.3 GPA. Coming up, Del Oro is back on the show. We'll see them face Del Campo next. Then it's Del Campo and Wood Creek Girls Volleyball when 49ers Sack High Sports returns. We got next. We ready to flex. We are ready to rock. Headed to the top. We got next. Can't settle for less. I'm going to need your best. So give it all you got. Kennedy Schoenauer makes space with four defenders around her and fires from 31 yards out and hits it perfectly.
At Tracy Toyota, we're not just devoted to selling cars. We're committed to our community. We're donating $100,000 to help local organizations in Tracy. We call it Champions Thinking Heroes, like the Tracy Family Resource Center who serve the local community. To reach our goal, we'll donate $50 for every vehicle sold. Check out our great lineup of new Toyotas. Our certified used cars come with a seven-year, 100,000-mile warranty. Tracy Toyota, with you all the way. Many have tried, but many have failed. The 49ers got Touch the loudest fans in the NFL. Touchdown! 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 Touch
Parker Reem here at Weston Ranch where the starting quarterback, Namir Brown Singer, was getting taped at pregame. We'll get to him later, but it was Mountain House that struck first. Amari Brooks finds a wide open Dexter Francis III. A nice pitch and catch for the touchdown, 6 to nothing after the missed two-point conversion. We head to the second quarter. Weston Ranch trying to get something done on offense, but the Mustang defense just too strong. Anias Brooks with an incredible interception right there. Mountain House held a 6 to nothing lead at the half, but the Cougars were ready to pounce in the third quarter. Q Namir coming to the rescue, takes the snap right here, almost slips, but a good thing they were only a yard out, extends and scores the touchdown 6-6 six to six after the missed PAT, and he was not done. Fourth down, fourth quarter, less than 10 minutes to go, it's clutch time for Namir. He's running once more, gets the first down, and why not just take it all the way? He puts them on his back. Second touchdown for Namir on the day. But he can do more than just use his feet. He has an absolute cannon for an arm. Namir unloads one. A perfect ball to Xavier Jones. 19-6. The Cougars led at that point. Let's take you to two minutes left in the fourth quarter. Third down. Mountain House only down by one score. 19-12. to But Namir Brown-Sanger just won't go down. What a run. It was so long. I had to speed it up for you guys. Over 200 yards rushing. Four total touchdowns for Namir on the day, but Mountain House just wouldn't quit. After a long touchdown, brings them within one score. They get the ball back, clocks at one second, one final play. Brooks to Roy Gardner, but Dexter Francis takes it as he's going down and scores the touchdown, so they're just within a two-point conversion from tying it. Brooks looking for Gardner once more, but a great defensive play seals the deal. And Weston Ranch comes out with the win, 26-24, to to secure their first win of the season. Let's hear from Brown Sanger. First game back since freshman year. Uh, finally get a dub here. I uh, haven't got one since uh, October 2019, so feels good to bring one home for the school. Parker Ream here at Escalon High School with a rivalry game in girls volleyball. Cougars taking on Rip and Christian. And I'll let y'all decide which student section was louder. First set, Knights were riding high. Kristen Van Elderen gets the bump. Mercy Lara with the set. And Jordan Vanderveen sends it home for the kill. But the Cougars responded quick. Riley Laddig sets up, and remember this name, Mandy Murphy for the kill. Ties things up three apiece. First set, remember her name? <laughs> She's right there, Mandy Murphy with the bump. And who else to finish it off but herself? Mandy pounds it. Cougars take the first set 25 to 15, but the second set we go. Vanderveen gets set up for another kill, but Emily Middleton's shoulder. Hey, when you're on, you're on. I guess that counts as a kill, but RC came at Escalon strong after that. Elder into Mercy, Lara, and Lord have mercy because Emily Van Groningen demolished that ball. The Knights take the second set, but the Cougars were on the prowl for the third. Murphy to Hood to Emily Vickers on the receiving end, and those two were like Batman and Robin all night long. Vickers gets the bump. Latig the set, and Batman herself, she's right there, Mandy Murphy once more. A clutch kill puts the Cougars on top, and they didn't look back. I'm sure y'all get the gist by now. Let's give you the exact, really, reverse play. Murphy to Latig to Vickers, who slams it home herself. That ball is out right there. Her fifth kill of the night, Murphy tallies a game-high eight as Escalon goes on to win three sets to one. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, Brian Mueller here at Liberty Ranch High School where the Hawks were hosting Elk Grove Monday night and Liberty Ranch came out strong. First set, Peyton Snow sets it up for Maddie Trulock and her southpaw spike gives the Hawks the early lead. Set point for Liberty Ranch, Jess Lawden comes up with the dig. Carly Furtado puts it on a platter for Snow to secure the first set for the Hawks 25-19 blizzard of kills for Snow. She had a game high 16. Much of the same in the second. Hadley Gray tries to sneak this over, but the Hawks are ready for it. Snow goes down for the dig. Furtado sets up for Rachel Smith to slam it home. She had 12 kills. Liberty Ranch wins the second set 25-20, but the thundering herd would thunder back in the third set. Billy Hogue puts it up there for Noah Tomaharapai, and she puts it away. Elk Grove jumps out to a 10-4 lead. They would win the set 25-20. On to the fourth now. The home team appeared to be in control. Lawton laying down the law here to give Liberty a 13-10 lead. But the thundering herd comes all the way back to get set point. Leah Poteris 
Handles the serve, Hoag sets it, and Gray seals the set for Elk Grove. She had a team high 12 kills, and we go to a decisive fifth set. Once again, Liberty Ranch gets off to a good start. Callie McCoy sends it right back from whence it came. The Hawks have an 11-8 lead. They're playing the 15 here, but Elk Grove would not go away. The Thundering Herd have match point at 14-12. The spike is long, and Elk Grove comes all the way back with an improbable 3-2 win to start the season 1-0. Coming up, the play of the week. It could be this play, but you'll have to stick around and see. But first, take a look at our football top 10 poll. Time now for the play of the week. First off, we'll count down some contenders and then award the play we thought was the best of the best in this week's play of the week. We start in Vacaville, Oak Ridge on the attack and Brady Mott of Vaca picks off the pass two yards deep and he could go all well up pretty far. Down the 99 we go to Escalon and the Cougars, Emily Middleton who uses her shoulder to get the ball over for the point. What? That's not it. Now out to Granite Bay where Haley Erickson does it all. The bump and then the running spike. Woohoo! But that's not the play of the week either. Let's jump on the 220 to Stockton. Western Ranch Namir Brown Sanger gets caught up in the wash, but he does break free and the junior could go the distance. Hey, hit the fast forward button because he does go the distance. That's not it. Back to volleyball for the Western Ranch tourney. Franklin of Elk Grove's Mia Moschini chases down the ball and wildly hits it clear across the court for the point. That did not get it because of this. Mountain House down eight with one second left. Final play. Roy Gardner heads down the end zone. Could he make it? He does not. Dexter Francis the third says, give me that, bro. I got you. And I got you for the play of the week. That's the play. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, okay. That's the play of the week, and that's our 49ers Sack High Sports for this week. Thank you for watching. I'm Aubrey Tolliver. And I'm Robert Bronstein. Be sure to join us next week with lots of more great plays and highlights and another play of the week. We'll see you then.